you'll find this when we do uh, bones in a couple of weeks. We'll find connective tissues in there too. And they all have two common characteristics and this was part of your textbook reading notes and um, most people got the extracellular matrix part but a lot of people left out the cells. So they all have cells and they all have this extracellular matrix. Get it? Matrix? <laughs> anyway. So we'll, and we'll talk about each of those in more detail as we get further into this. So, what do they do? Well, because there are so many different types and because they are found in so many different places, they have lots and lots of different jobs depending on what kind of connective tissue they are. And some of them overlap. So let's just go through the functions storage and insulation. Oh. Um, so um, fat stores energy, but it also insulates the body um, to help maintain the heat. Some of the connective tissue is actually a place for water to be stored. Transportation of materials. So the cardiovascular system, I think, is probably the most obvious one where, you know, the blood is, is, um, is responsible for transporting um, oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients and um, waste products. But the lymphatic system is also uh, a system for transportation of uh, immune cells, but it's also a transportation of this stuff called lymph, which is basically extracellular fluid, and we'll talk more about that as we get into it. So transportation of materials and connective tissues also provide structure and support. So bone, tendons and ligaments, cartilage, okay, all of those things are types of connective tissues. Um, they also provide um, packing material or filler or cushioning it wasn't too obvious. If you um, dissected the fetal pig or even the frog, there's not a whole lot of packing material in there. Um, however, if you were to look at pictures of a cadaver, for example, um, you could actually see places where um, there's different material between different things holding everything together so that um, you know things don't slosh around as you walk around. So this is the best image I could find because it's packing material, filler, and cushioning. You don't actually have, um, you know, pink styrofoam packing peanuts in you, but the goal is the same. All right, <clears throat> defense, protection, and repair is another function of the connective tissue. So that brings us back to the lymphatic system, immune system, um, as well as the cardiovascular system, because that's how different kinds of white blood cells and platelets and um, all of the other materials that you need to heal are brought to the place you need them. Okay, so there are several different types of cells that you're going to be responsible for knowing about. Osteocytes are bone cells. Cites, C-Y-T-E-S, meaning cells. Osteo is bone, like osteoporosis. Um, uh, a bone cell can be actually, uh, well, a piece of a bone is called an osteon. So osteo is for bone and cites is for cells. And it's actually this, um, that cell right in the middle of the picture that has all those sort of finger-like projections coming off of it is a bone cell and I'll explain why it has that structure so we'll go back to structure fits the function for that one. Chondrocytes are cartilage cells and you've seen some of these already when you were setting up your flashcards. Chondro refers to cartilage, sites again is cells and I'll talk to you a little bit more about why it often looks like um, the cells come in pairs, and we'll talk about that. And that is one of the ways you can tell a cartilage, um, a slide of cartilage tissue from um, any other kind of connective tissue. So chondrocytes. Adipocytes are adipose cells or fat cells. Um, so if you look closely at some of these, and we'll talk about this when we look at flashcards too, the white part, it almost looks like a lumen 
because we've talked about those. But in fact, in this case, it's not. It's actually a vacuole or a um, vesicle inside the cell that is actually filled with fat droplets. And it's actually pushed all of the rest of the cytoplasm and all the organelles over to the sides. Um, so the white space you see is not a lumen, but is actually a vacuole contained within the cell. And you can see a drawing, so it, it shows you how all that stuff is pushed over to the side. Erythrocytes. Very nice, red blood cells. Um, I assume that you've heard that term before. And fibroblasts. Now, the, the suffix blast, we're actually going to, it's going to appear fairly frequently. And a blast is something that makes something or builds something. So a fibroblast would be a kind of cell that produces fibers. Um, and so you can see again, they have these little cell extensions and they're kind of fuzzy. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those when we look at your flashcards as well. And I believe um, this was one of the questions on your reading, your textbook reading notes as well. All right. Um, and then we have cells for defense and repair. You don't have to know all of the names of these different types of white blood cells and what they do. We just don't have time uh, to go into that. But suffice it to say that um, there are white blood cells and platelets and um, uh, well, histamine isn't a cell. It's actually a type a chemical that's released. But anyway, so all of those are there, connective tissue cells for defense and repair. Okay, so those are the cell types. So the, the um, so every connective tissue has cells and extracellular matrix. And so now we looked at the different kinds of cells, so now let's look at the matrix. All right, the matrix has two parts. It has the ground substance. Um, usually the ground substance is made up of a combination of water, these things called adhesion proteins, polysaccharides, which if you remember from bio are long chains of sugar molecules. Oh, and they, it kind of reminds, the ground substance kind of reminds me of jello. So um, it's not always the consistency of jello, um, but it is not, the ground substance is not cellular. All right, there's a lot of water in it, um, so um, diffusion can take place in and out of this um, ground substance. It can act as a reservoir for water. Um, for example, if you have an injury in that area of your body gets swollen, what happens is this connective tissue fills with water, which is why it's swollen. Um, these adhesion proteins, they actually take whatever cells are in the area and they stick them to the fibers, for lack of a better word. Um, and the polysaccharides are actually what's going to help change the consistency of the matrix. Again, we'll go back to the textbook reading notes in that the matrix of a connective tissue is going to range anywhere from just a liquid matrix, such as in blood, to a crystalline solid matrix like in bone, and then you have a bunch of things in between. So it's the, um, the number of these polysaccharides uh, that will help determine the density. All right, so that's the ground substance. That's kind of like the jello part of the um, matrix, all right? But the matrix is also made up of fibers. Now, um, most people on the reading got this. Uh, but some people didn't. So the three types of fibers that you're going to be concerned about are collagen, elastic, and reticular. Collagen, you've actually, if you haven't done it already, you're going to be doing a little bit of research on. Um, collagen fibers give structures a high tensile strength, okay? So um, they're able to 
stretch. Elastic fibers, the actual word elastic means the ability to return to its original shape. So elastic can allow for stretching, but then the tissue returns back to its original position. So that's what elastic fibers do. This stuff called reticular fibers um, sort of act as a scaffolding and support in really soft um, tissues and organs that would otherwise just kind of fall apart because they're, there's not a great um, intricate structure to them. Like uh, the liver, for example, would have reticular tissue. It's very soft. The um, lymph nodes, the spleen, so any of those really soft, soft organs would have this reticular fibers to help give it some shape. All right, so in this particular micrograph, you can see the collagen fibers. Now the collagen fibers are actually sort of a pale pink. They're a little bit wider. They don't have the, the obvious structure that the elastic fibers do. Okay, so the elastic fibers are significantly, easy, significantly easier to see, but that sort of pale pink in the background are the collagen fibers, and then you can see a whole bunch of cells dotted throughout that as well. And here we have some reticular fibers. And what you're looking at in that second micrograph is actually the dark, almost black, sort of squiggly lines. They almost look like a tree branches. Those are the reticular fibers which give the cells, which are those purple things, um, sort of a place to hang out. And it gives the whole organ some shape. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about is blood supply, and that's, that's going to vary a whole lot. When we talked about epithelial tissues, no epithelial had a blood supply, so they were all avascular. That's not true with connective tissues. Um, it actually varies quite a bit. So there are some highly vascular connective tissues, such as osseous tissue, which is another way to say bone, um, and reticular tissue lots and lots of blood vessels. Um, there are some connective tissues that have a blood supply, but it's not great. And tendons and ligaments are an example of this, which is why when you have, um, sometimes uh, if you have an injury, you'll hear someone say that, oh, uh, you know, a bone, if you have a break, at least it's, it's going to heal faster. Where if you had a strain in a tendon or a ligament, that takes a longer time to heal, which is true because the bone has a whole lot of blood supply so that it's able to peel faster um, than tendons or ligaments. But then there's cartilage, which doesn't have any blood supply at all, which is why, generally speaking, if you have a cartilage tear, um, they're not going to just let it heal because it takes forever um, for cartilage to heal. And we'll talk more about that, too, when we look at the flashcards. So let's look at some slides. So this is actually um, it's some cooked meat. I'm not quite even sure what that is. The reason I chose this picture was because it shows, it shows the perfectly white, um, smooth, and maybe even a little shiny cartilage that you'd find at the end of a long bone. There's no blood supply in that. You would be able to see it. Um, so it's this nice white color. Now this is kind of nasty. But however, it, it, it illustrates the fact, so this is an Achilles tendon, which is clearly ripped off somebody's heel, um, and the surgeon has their, has it, you know, holding the Achilles tendon, and it looks like they're going to try to reattach. Um, and although it's not obvious, I mean, there's a lot of blood you can see on the leg, um, but there is a, a small blood supply in the um, tendon as well. And I couldn't find a great picture of a, I mean, you've all seen pictures of compound fractures with these bones sticking out of legs or arms and this blood everywhere. Um, so I found this diagram, which I thought was really good, because this does illustrate how much uh, blood there actually is in a bone, um, where it's, it's not something we generally think of. So unlike epithelial, where all epithelial tissues are avascular, Depending on what kind of connective tissue you're talking about, you can have highly vascular, some, or avascular. And that is that. So, if you have any questions, uh, write them down on your notes, and we'll talk about them in class. All right. Bye.